Sup guys, Fat Archon here, bringing you another 40k review. Today it'll actually be a preview because yeah, we're gonna go over the Warhammer Community's Chaos Space Marines Codex uh, preview. They showed off a few of the detachments, a couple stratagems, and a few enhancements as well. I'm gonna try to keep this a short video, so hopefully it's not too long-winded, but I will say, going over it, I read it a couple times, of course, uh, <laughs> and uh, I did start brainstorming some really fun little neat uh, little combos and ideas that we might be able to pull off, so this hopefully will have some fun info, get you brainstorming on what, uh, what to prepare for once the codex drops. As always, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, for sure, what I'd really like to hear, though, uh, what are your guys' opinions on some of these attachments? Like, which ones are you guys drawn to? Um, are there any, like, combos that you come up with on your own? I'd love to hear it. Feel free to share it down below. I read literally every single comment. You guys are, like, the nicest people on the planet, so I always love hearing from you guys. Don't be afraid to reach out, uh, also, if you have any questions of the sort. Without further ado, though, so I'm going to skip all the fluff and just go over, like, the detachments and whatnot. Uh, to start off, they got Deceptors, a.k.a. the Alpha Legion. So, this one's looking really damn spicy. Uh, Masters of Misdirection. In the Declare Battle Formation step, you can select a number of Legionaries and Cultist Mob units. Until the end of those uh, the battle, those units and any characters attached to them, aside from uh, Epic Heroes, they get the Infiltrate ability. You can have, in a 2k game, you can have up to three Legionaries and up to three Cultists. So, this gets pretty nuts, though, when you start thinking about it. So, uh, cultists, assuming they didn't change the squad sizes, they can be up to 20 models each. And then legionaries, uh, of course, they can be 10 each. So that, on its own, 60 freaking models. Uh, you toss on three dark apostles, which are two models each, and then three dark commune, that's another uh, 15 models. That'd be 112 models you could place nine inches away from your opponent or I believe uh, I believe it was like 1,200 points, something like that, if you went all that all out, you know? Uh, what's also pretty clever about that is, uh, you know, the objective control. You get to start the game with cultists who have sticky objectives, unless it was changed. I, I, I doubt it was changed. You can sticky three freaking objectives out in no man's land right when the game freaking starts. Like, it, it gets nutso, guys. It gets really nutso. I would think probably the best way is going to be MSU. So, so really, you wouldn't do the 112 models unless you want to. And, may, and maybe that's the way to go. I don't know. I guess time will tell. But you'd probably do three MSU uh, legionaries and then three MSU cultists. Super cheap and cheerful. Uh, you got board control right off the bat. You can also screen out like a world leader scouting into you. This is insanely freaking uh, good. This may very well be one of the better detachments, but uh, I guess we'll see. Because next up, we got Renegade Raiders. Um, so there is a typo. Apparently, they both have the same detachment name. But regardless, Masters of Misdirection V2. Uh, basically... Every model, all well, all Heretic Astartes get Assault, and each time they target an enemy unit that's within range of an objective marker, you improve the armor pin by one. So immediately, my mind goes straight to Possessed. Possessed, one of their biggest issues all edition long, assuming they didn't get changed, was that they were AP1. That really did hurt, um, yeah, AP1 into like two up saves and whatnot doesn't especially cut it. I will say, if you ran them undivided, well, okay, that totally flips the table, especially with Dev Wounds and all that, but suddenly being able to get to AP2. Where it gets even better, though, think of, like, Venom Crawlers. Suddenly, Venom Crawlers can go up to AP2. Now, do do realize that the target has to be in range of objective, but AP2 Venom Crawlers with Assault. Uh, your Vindicators get Assault. Oh, yeah, your Vindicators are going to go to AP4. Oh, how about AP5 Meltas? It gets freaking nuts. One of the biggest drawbacks of CSM was, yeah, how, how limited our armor piercing was, like, overall. It really was, in my opinion, kind of limited, especially if you compare it to, like, Necrons or some of the other armies out there this plays directly into fixing that i think this too may be one of the better detachments but again we'll we'll need to see it seems kind of boring like on first look but but that's actually pretty crazy some of the uh some of the abilities it gets there also, the very end of the article, they mentioned, too, that this detachment will also get an enhancement that gives a unit a 6-inch scout move as well. So that also is, is great to have, because currently the only scouts unit uh, CSM has that I can think of off the top of my head is the uh, the Beastmen, the Felgor Beastmen. Um, I just picked up their kit the other day, by the way. <laughs> Pretty sick models. Uh, all right, next up, ooh, this is one of my favorites. Not, not in a competitive sense, but in the we finally got a Chaos, uh, chaos, th chaos Cultist-themed detachment. So, Chaos Cult, uh, their detachment rule, Desperate Devotion. Each time a damned unit from your army with dark packs is selected to make a normal or advanced move or makes a charge, it can make a desperate pact. If it does, until the end of the phase, you add two to, the two, uh, you add two to their move and two to their charge rolls. 
Uh, a desperate pact is, is basically like a dark pact. Uh, you make a leadership test. If you fail it, you take D3 mortal wounds, um, but you still get the abilities either way, at least if I'm reading that um, correctly. Uh, what's really cool, so, uh, you know, you got the obvious bit. So, uh, now you got 8-inch move, a curse cultist. 8-inch move, cultist, with plus 2 charges. Like, it's pretty damn good on its own. But what I really like is it keys off both the enhancement and the stratagem. And who knows, maybe there's more stratagems that they haven't shown off that also key off that pretty well. Um, because, yeah, taking D3 mortal wounds on a potentially lower leadership unit, not always the best. Um, but again, it keys off these next ones. So, their enhancement, Incendiary Goad, a Dark Apostle or Dam model only. While the bearer's unit is below its starting strength, you add one to their strength characteristic. And if they're below half strength, you add one to their attacks characteristic as well. So, the second half of the attacks, like, eh, you know, it, it's helpful when it comes up, but that's not really what we're aiming for. That first bit, though, um, you almost, almost, assuming you fail a Desperate Pack, automatically get the plus one strength. So suddenly, that's getting you up to what? That's uh, Strength 6 um, Torments for the Accursed Cultist and Strength 5 um, Mutants. So that right there is pretty awesome. And again, if they get knocked down to below half strength, you can make up for some of those losses with the extra attack. So that's actually not terrible. When I first read it, I thought it was a terrible enhancement. But then thinking on it more, I'm like, okay, that, that, you know, that actually you get like a hyper-buffed uh, Accursed Cultist squad, which I think is like the main one you'd want to um, use that guy on. Uh, next up, though, so the stratagem also keys off of these. Infernal Sacrifice. Uh, in the fight phase, you can choose one damned unit that hasn't been selected to fight. Uh, you make a desperate pact. If it does, uh, you take D3 mortal wounds no matter what. Uh, yeah, whether you pass the leadership or not. So you might take 2d3 immortal wounds if you fail it. That said, until the end of the phase, you add 1 to their attacks. And if you did pass that leadership test, you also improve the strength by 1. So, okay, where this gets kind of spicy is you add a Dark Apostle. Dark Apostle is leadership 5. So you don't really have to worry about failing that test. Like, it'll be pretty goddamn rare uh, <laughs> when he fails that test. So that's pretty nice right there. So suddenly, you're getting your uh, your torments up to strength 7. Your mutants, your little cheap itty bitty dudes, strength 6. The apostle would go to strength 8. Uh, for the attacks, mutants uh, mutants would be 3 attacks each. You'd have 10 of them, so that's 30 attacks. Torments would be D6 plus 3 attacks. So on average rolls, that'd be 72 attacks. Just from your little cheap little uh, crappy uh, <laughs> cultist squad right there. Uh, I don't think that includes the uh, Dark Apostles attacks either. Yeah, it gets kind of nutso right there. Obviously, okay, it's not like the most competitive thing on the planet, but like, for how cheap that unit is, like, that's actually pretty good. And for how hard they will to be um, uh, taken off the board as well, I'm really liking this so far. And again, just think of the other enhancements and stratagems that are likely coming along with this, plus any maybe uh, potential data sheet changes that they make. Maybe they uh, buff up, like, regular cultists or something like that. I'm, I'm super pleased to see this. This will be, like, if I'm going to run a fun and fluffy list, there's a very high chance I'm going to look at these guys right away. Uh, next up, so they do mention that the Slaves to Darkness detachment, so the Index detachment, uh, they got renamed to Pact Bound Zealots. Um, so, you know, that's cool. Uh, and then they also have Veterans of the Long War, so basically Black Legion. Uh, they only show some stratagems in this case. So the first stratagem is uh, Black Crusade. In your movement phase, you choose either an infantry or mounted unit that's not damned. Until the end of the turn, uh, the unit is eligible to shoot in a turn in which it advanced or fell back. And Bolt Pistols, Bolt Guns, and bolt, uh, Combi Bolters all get the Devastating Wounds ability, but they do cap out at a maximum of six wounds um, from that ability. Uh, I'll be honest, this one's kind of meh. Um, the being able to advance, fall back, and shoot, like, okay, that'll have its uses, especially for, like, secondaries and stuff. So, so this is a useful stratagem to have. The Devastating Wounds, though, is kind of crap. Uh, you would have to get a lot of attack. To get six dev wounds to go through, you need, you know, roll a wound, roll a six. Like, that's going to take some doing, unless you have an ability to get, like, critical wounds on fives or something. You would need to put in, I don't know, 40 shots or something like that. Um, also, too, the fact that they cap it kind of stinks as well. I guess you could roll hot, and there is cases that'll come up. And, and maybe, like, it still has some use. Maybe it's, like... I don't know, you're fighting a freaking Terminator Lord or something. You need to plink that last wound off. Okay, there is, like, you can roll the dice, literally, and uh, hope that you get the dead wounds. The next one, though, is, is a bit spicier. So, let the galaxy burn. Abaddon, uh, obviously name this one. 
in your shooting phase and choose one Heretic Astartes unit that is not Zinch, uh, marked, aka Rubrics, uh, and has not been selected to shoot, until the end of the phase, ranged weapons get Ignores Cover, and any Torrent weapons, like Flamers and the sort, automatically get a tax, uh, tax characteristic of 6. I like this a lot. Uh, Ignores Cover is a fantastic stratagem. I remember when I first did, like, Death Guard, when I did their review in, like, the beginning of 10th or whatever, I was, like, talking crap about these sort of abilities, and then you come to learn, like, oh yeah, like, literally everybody gets cover all the time, so that's basically plus one AP just on its own, so I do like that. The the Torrents thing, that's not going to come up so much. Uh, sadly, rubrics obviously are left out, because obviously they'd be, like, amazing. <laughs> they'd be, like, OP. They'd be broken with that. Uh, but, like, heavy flamers, or maybe got an incidental flamer in your legionaries or whatever, okay, I can see some use there. So I do like those abilities. I wish they'd shown off the detachment rule, because we don't know what the detachment rule is going to be, nor the enhancements. So very curious to see what the uh, veterans of the long war, very curious to see what they're going to bring. Uh, next up... So, uh, for Fellhammer Siege Host, aka Iron Warriors, they're only shown off an enhancement, um, but it's alright, it's alright. Uh, Iron Artifice, a Heretic Astartes infantry model only, the bearer's weapons have anti-vehicle 4-up and anti-fortification 4-up. Uh, I actually just realized it's infantry only, because originally I was going to say, ooh, this might be really good on a Lord Discordant or whatever, if it's infantry only... Yeah, it's getting kind of questionable now. I guess you can do the Chaos Lord with the hammer, so he'd have dev wounds. Suddenly you'd be doing dev wounds on 4-up, so okay, I guess there is a little bit of value there. Uh, I love Iron Warriors. They're one of my favorite um, legions, so very curious to see how they're going to be once the uh, Codex releases. But yeah, not, not the best, not the worst. Uh, next up, so Dread Talons, uh, um, basically Night Lords, it sounds like. Their enhancement is going to be Warp Fueled Thrusters. This one is uh, damn spicy. This is probably one of the strongest rules they previewed in, in this preview. Uh, jump, pack, uh, jump Pack Lord only, so only the new guy, or if you're like me, the converted ones that you have from the past. Uh, at the end of your opponent's turn, if the uh, bearer's unit is not within engagement range, uh, you can remove them from the battlefield and place them into strategic reserves. So that's basically a free realm of chaos that like demons get. That is an incredibly powerful ability. That is like that is uh, yeah like a game winner in like any and every army that shows up in. I really really like that. Uh, it makes you be tempted to, like, maybe you just run a solo jump pack lord. It does say that it affects his unit, so you can attach him to, hopefully, warp talons, at the very least, raptors. So you could have a whole unit doing that every single opponent's turn, so that's kind of cool. I could also see, again, doing it, uh, him on his lonesome. Just have a small little 32 millimeter base, jumping around wherever he needs to go, um, hopefully doing objectives and secondaries and that sort of stuff. Not the worst thing ever. And definitely excited to see how dread talons do as well. Um, because that right there is very powerful, so if they have a good detachment rule on top of it, uh, I will say if they're doing Night Lords, they might mess around with leadership, so hopefully they don't go that route again, but I suppose we'll find out. Uh, next up, Pact Bound Zealots, so the um, basically the, the index detachment. Uh, a Heretic Astartes Corn model only. Uh, add one to the attacks and strength characteristics, and then each time they take a dark pact and you don't fail the leadership, you roll a d3, and you get d3 strength and attacks instead. This one's just so-so, honestly. Like, if, uh, hopefully it's cheap. You, you get the guaranteed plus one, but the dark pact isn't guaranteed. Uh, it kind of sucks that you, like, have to pass that leadership test, so I'm not that sold on it. But again, if it's cheap, if it's, like, 10 or 15 points, then, then hell yeah, I'm going to toss it in there. But if it's 20 or 25, yeah, that's probably a skip. Though, again, we need to see what the rest of the uh, um, index, or, excuse me, detachment brings along before we, uh, you know, go too deep into that. Uh, and then they do mention at the very end, yes, Soul Forged War Pact Detachment, who tunes up your monstrous machines with Vashtor the Archiphanes, Dastardly Contracts, and Demon Vehicle Augmentations. Ooh, that's probably the one I'm most excited about, honestly. Uh, Vashtor has been trashed the entire freaking edition. He's been one of the worst models in the game when it comes to, like, points to ability, um, comparison. Just all around terrible. For them to finally bring him some love and buff him up a little, I'm incredibly excited about that. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, the Codex is just, what, two weeks uh, two weeks away, three weeks away, or something like that. So, uh, a thousand percent, I will be covering it once it comes out. I'll totally do a full review. Hopefully, you guys will be able to come and uh, join along with that. Regardless, like I said, if uh, I'm very curious to hear your guys' opinions on these detachments and enhancements that we saw. Are there any that jump out at you? Uh, and then again, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Otherwise, good luck out there, guys, and uh, have a great rest of your night.